chemical bonds are formed so atoms can achieve a full outer shell of electrons. This makes atoms more stable and therefore less reactive. In the periodic table, the elements of group zero are called the noble gases. That's this column on the right hand side here. These elements have a full outer shell of electrons, which makes them chemically inert. In other words, they are unreactive, and so they are chemically stable. The other atoms in the periodic table react and form chemical bonds until they have the same electronic structure as one of the noble gas elements. There are three different types of strong chemical bonds ionic, covalent and metallic. For ionic bonding, the particles are oppositely charged ions and it occurs in compounds formed when metals are combined with non-metals. For covalent bonding, the particles are atoms which are sharing pairs of electrons and it occurs in most non-metallic elements and in compounds made of non-metals. In metallic bonding, the particles are atoms which share delocalized electrons and this type of bonding occurs in metallic elements and in alloys. In this video, we will look in detail at ionic bonding. To understand ionic bonding, we need to first remember what ions are. An ion is an atom or a molecule that has lost or gained electrons and become charged. And ions can be positively or negatively charged. When a metal reacts with a non-metal, electrons in the outer shell of the metal atom are transferred. And metals, which are found on the bottom and the left of the periodic table, generally have a small number of electrons in their outer shell. And so, to form bonds and get a full outer shell of electrons, they lose their outer shell electrons. And since electrons have a negative charge, this means that the metal atoms become positively charged metal ions. Non-metals, which are found on the top and on the right-hand side of the periodic table, they have an outer shell of electrons that is almost full. And so they form bonds to fill their outer shell of electrons by gaining negative electrons. And so they become negatively charged non-metal ions. You can predict what type of ion an element will form based on its position in the periodic table. For instance, the metals, which are shown here in red, they will typically lose their electrons and become positive ions. And non-metals, which are shown here in blue, will gain electrons and become negative ions. Ions aren't simply positively or negatively charged. Some ions can be more positive than others or more negative than others. And so the sign and the size of the charge can vary. And that will depend on the electronic structure of the atom that the ion is being formed from. For instance, the group 1 elements shown here on the far left hand side, they have all got one electron in their outer shell. And you can see this from their electronic structure. For instance, lithium has got an electronic structure of 2 comma 1 and sodium is 2 comma 8 comma 1. Potassium 2 comma 8 comma 8. Comma one. And you can see that they all have one negative electron in their outer shell, which they lose in order to fill their outer shell. And this means that they will become one plus ions. The outer shell of group two elements also has very few electrons in it. You can see from their electronic structures that they all have two electrons in their outer shell. For instance, beryllium 2 comma 2, magnesium 2 comma 8 comma 2, etc. And so to fill their outer shell, they lose those two negative electrons from their outermost occupied shell. And this means that the group two atoms become two plus ions.
In contrast, when we move over to the non-metals on the right-hand side of the periodic table, for instance, group seven, we can see that this outer occupied electron shell is almost full. Fluorine has the electronic structure 2, 7 and chlorine 2, 8, 7. So they've both got seven electrons in their outer shell. And so to fill that outer shell, they gain one negative electron, and this means that they become one minus ions. And last of all, group six have got six electrons in their outermost occupied electron shell. And so to fill that outer shell, they just need to gain two negative electrons. And this means they will become two minus ions. So for metal atoms, when they become ions, they lose their outer shell electrons, and so their outer shell is now empty. And this means that their second to last shell, which was already filled, becomes their full outer shell of electrons. It's more simple for the non-metals. When they become ions, they just gain enough electrons to completely fill their outer shell. And so now all of these atoms, when they become ions, have the electronic structure of the noble gases. Dot and cross diagrams can be used to show the electron transfer during the formation of an ionic compound. And they're called dot and cross diagrams as dots and crosses are used to represent the electrons. For example, in the formation of sodium chloride, we start with the element sodium, which has got an atomic number of 11. This means that sodium has got 11 protons and 11 electrons. And so the electronic structure for sodium will be 2, 8, 1. And this adds up to the 11 electrons that sodium needs to have. And therefore, we can see that sodium has got one electron in its outer shell, which makes sense since sodium is in group one of the periodic table. And so we show the symbol for sodium and we show that one electron in its outer shell. And we could use either a dot or a cross. It doesn't matter which we use. I've chosen to use a dot here. And then we move on to chlorine, which has got an atomic number of 17, so 17 protons and 17 electrons. And so its electronic structure will be 2, 8, 7. And it's got seven electrons in its outer occupied shell, which means it is in group seven of the periodic table. This time, when we show the dot and cross diagram for chlorine, we show those seven outer shell electrons as crosses since we use the dots for sodium. You'll notice that I'm only showing the electrons in the outer shells of these atoms. That is totally fine for GCSE chemistry. This makes our lives a lot easier and it makes the picture of what's happening much more clear. You can see that neither of these atoms has a full outer shell of electrons. And so what happens when these elements bond together and react is that the one outer shell electron of sodium is transferred to the outer shell of the chlorine. And this means that both of the atoms now have a full outer shell. And you can see this from the electronic structures. Sodium is now 2, 8 and chlorine is now 2, 8, 8. And we can show this in the dot and cross diagram as well. This is sodium, which now has no electrons in that outer shell. And this is chlorine with its eight electrons that it's got in the outer shell. And we can recognize the electron that chlorine has gained because we're showing it as a dot, whereas the original seven electrons are shown as crosses. And it's worth pointing out that there's no actual difference between these dots and crosses. It's just demonstrating which atom originally owned those electrons. And finally, it's important to acknowledge that the sodium has lost one negative electron. And so now it will have a charge of one plus. And we show this by putting square brackets around the electronic structure and around the dot and cross diagram. And we put a one plus charge in the top right outside those brackets. And then in the same sort of way, chlorine has gained one negative electron. And so now it will have a one minus charge. And we show this by putting the square brackets around the electronic structure and the dot and cross diagram and putting one minus in the top right 
outside those square brackets. And it's worth noting that this could be a four mark GCSE question where you're expected to show the electronic structure of the original atoms and then show the electronic structures afterwards with the square brackets being all important along with those charges of these ions that have been produced as a result of the reaction between the atoms. If we look at a second dot and cross diagram example, for instance, the formation of magnesium oxide, magnesium has an atomic number of 12, so 12 protons and 12 electrons, so the electronic structure 2, 8, 2, which makes sense because magnesium is in group 2, and it's got those two electrons in its outer occupied shell that it needs to lose. Oxygen has an atomic number of 8, so 8 protons, 8 electrons, electronic structure 2, 6. So to fill its outer shell, it needs to gain 2 electrons. If we show the dot and cross diagram for the atoms before the electron transfer occurs, you can see I'm showing the magnesium's electrons as two dots and oxygen's electrons as crosses. What happens during the transfer is both of those electrons from magnesium's outer shell move across to the oxygen atom's outer shell. And then when that has finished, you can see that magnesium's outer shell is now emptied. Oxygen has become the oxide ion, and it is now completely filled with those six crosses and two dots. Because the oxygen has gained two electrons, it will now have a charge of two minus, and magnesium has lost those two negative electrons, and so its charge will now be two plus. So I'm showing those charges with square brackets around the dot and cross diagram and square brackets around the electronic structure and putting those charges in the top right outside those brackets. For a final example, we can show a dot and cross diagram for the formation of calcium chloride. Calcium has an atomic number of 20, so 20 protons and therefore 20 electrons as an atom. Its electronic structure will be 2, 8, 8, 2, which means it's got two electrons in its outer shell, which it needs to lose to fill its outer shell. Chlorine has an atomic number of 17, so 17 protons, 17 electrons, therefore seven electrons in its outer shell, and so it needs to gain one electron in order for that outer shell to be filled. If we take a look at the dot and cross diagram for this, you can see calcium has got two dots in its outer shell and chlorine has got seven electrons shown by crosses. One of calcium's electrons moves across to the chlorine atom, making it form into a chloride ion, and that chlorine now has a full outer shell as the chloride ion. But calcium doesn't. Calcium has got one electron left over. And so what needs to happen is a second chlorine atom needs to have its electron shell filled by that transfer of the second electron from the calcium atom over to the chlorine atom, making it become a chloride ion as well. And so one calcium atom gives one electron each to those two chlorine atoms. And so at the end, we've got one calcium ion and two chloride ions. And we can see they've all got full outer shells because calcium's outer shell is now empty, meaning its inner shell is now full. And those two chloride ions have got a full outer shell with seven crosses and one dot. They are ions though, so they need brackets around them. And we do need them for the electronic structures as well and we also need to put the charges outside those brackets. The chlorine atom gained one electron so it has become a chloride ion, there are two of them, and the calcium atom lost two negative electrons so it will become a two plus ion.